I need to make a couple of short sleeve blouses for my everyday wardrobe. And while I do that, I want to talk about the myth of natural talent. Every time I wear an outfit I've made, someone tells me, I wish I had your talent, or you are so naturally good at sewing. I think the idea that everyone who has a skill must be naturally good at it is harmful for those who struggle with learning a new skill, and dismisses the hard work put in by those who are very good at it. Nobody enters this world knowing how to sew. Every single person with a skill has stories of struggles in the beginning. Heck, everyone who has a skill still struggles with expanding that skill. Let me take you back through my sewing journey because it has been a bumpy ride. I did not grow up knowing how to sew and I didn't go to school for any kind of costuming or fashion related degree, but I wanted to learn to sew from a young age. When I was a kid, it's because I wanted to sew my own princess dresses, and as a teenager, I wanted big, poofy 1950s style dresses. As an adult, I just wanted clothes that fit my tiny frame that weren't kids' clothes. My mother hated sewing, and while she had a sewing machine, the table was mostly used as a vanity, and I think I only saw her use it once to sew Girl Scout patches on our uniforms. I think she got through three patches before she gave up entirely. My mom was actually very kind in indulging me in all the hobbies I took an interest in, and one year when I was in high school, for Christmas she bought me a sewing machine and scrap fabric so I could teach myself. I worked all day trying to thread the machine, load the bobbin, and sew a straight line, my sister took one look and laughed at the progress I made after so many hours. Don't worry, she has since apologized. And after that, the sewing machine sat in my bedroom closet mocking me for being so inept at something I wanted so badly to do. Around 10 years later, that very sewing machine came back into my life and I decided to give it another go. I know Joke bought the Sewing for Dummies book, which was a surprisingly very helpful beginner's guide for basic sewing techniques and terms. And I sewed my first skirt. I found a blog post about sewing a simple gathered rectangle skirt, and it told me to make sure to add seam allowance. Since I wasn't quite too sure what that was, I added an extra inch on every side. It was absolutely gigantic. I wore it only once, and only for this picture. What you don't see is how heavily I pinned it in the back. It took me another year and a half before I made my second skirt. This time from one of those learn to sew patterns. This is when I found YouTube. The pattern actually had a walkthrough video. Without it, I would have been totally lost. Patterns are in an alien language when you aren't used to the markings or the terms used in the instructions. It looks pretty good, right? What you don't see is there is no interfacing in the waistband, so it just crumples when it's worn. And I could not figure out the zipper placket, so the zipper is just out there for the world to see. But I was so proud of myself, and a little overly cocky of my newly acquired skills. I decided to make my Halloween costume that year. It was a complete disaster. It took me no less than two months to finish, and I used very cheap polyester satin that with all the seam ripping I had to do just got more frayed and scarred as I worked with it. I sewed the skirt to the bodice on backwards so the raw edges were on the outside. Not once, but twice. And then I just gave up and hit it with a ribbon. The bodice was huge, but the sleeves were too small, and my sewing machine was not able to do zigzag stitches, so I had to do the buttonholes by hand, which were atrocious. But I did it. I wore it to a Halloween party, and it was immediately ruined by someone spilling wine on it. And I immediately put my sewing machine back in the closet for six more months. We moved into a new apartment, and I decided to get serious about sewing. So I set up a small corner in the bedroom as a sewing corner. That sewing corner eventually took over the entire bedroom. And I sewed these pants next. They don't look terrible from this angle, except those darts could be better. But the zipper on the other side and the side seam it's connected to is awful. And the one time I wore them, I just had to keep my arm at my side to hopefully hide how terrible it actually looked. I sewed a pencil skirt next, and in my attempt to make it form-fitting, I accidentally sewed it to where it was impossible to walk, hence why I'm standing this way. 
but each time I finished a garment, I learned something new. It was a painfully slow process. I assumed at this point that this was the best I could ever get. I just wasn't born with that special spark like those I was seeing on YouTube. I was never going to make things I could actually like or wear. I was following all the instructions, so that must just be how everyone's garment turns out if they're not naturally gifted. I think the only thing that kept me going was that I just honestly found it fun and relaxing. It was more like doing a jigsaw puzzle than actually trying to make clothes I could wear. I ended up sewing seven skirts and three dresses that year. One of those skirts is still in my wardrobe today. For the very first time, I made something I was really proud of. It was mind-blowing. It was the first time after years of trying, I realized I was actually getting better. This is when I decided to sew a garment a week in 2018. I knew the only way to get better was to push myself. Sure, I only made 30 items, but by the end of that year, I had gained so much knowledge. With this skirt, I learned what grain line was and to pay attention to it because there is definitely a wrong way to cut out fabric. This dress, I learned that polyester linings are hot and not great when sitting directly against the skin. This skirt was what made me start using pinking shears to cut out my pattern pieces because I got to the very end and was just finishing the seams when I accidentally cut a huge hole in the back. This blouse, I learned that interfacing is also essential for blouse facings and collars, but I was making progress. This is why I wanted to start a YouTube channel, because I thought those who had natural talent were the only ones that could actually do well with sewing, and the rest of us normal people could only make disappointments. I want others out there to know that we all struggle. I wish I had known this when I was younger. Sewing is a learned skill. It just takes practice and time. I don't want to edit out my struggles. It's been six and a half years since that first skirt and I'm still learning and I'm still growing. I still make mistakes. I still make things that I don't like or wear. I guarantee you all of those amazing sewists you see out there still make things that they are unhappy with as well. I just remind myself there is no such thing as being naturally good at sewing. So don't be too hard on yourself. If you are brand new to sewing, or if you've been sewing for a hundred years, I hope you find things you like about what you make. And I hope you find things to keep growing and learning. Because I believe that is what makes life worth living.